I have two files. Since one's new and one is old, we'll start with the new first. On the record, in State of Michigan versus Janelle Forsyth. Appearance, please. Assistant Public Defender Jacob Riley appearing on behalf of Ms. Forsyth for the purpose of her arraignment. Ms. Forsyth, you can take a step closer, please. Yes. Thank you. Uh, what I have here is a felony complaint. This alleges that on or about April 6, 2024, at West Ionia Street, North Capitol Avenue, City of Lansing, Ingham County, Michigan, and count one that you did knowingly or intentionally possess methamphetamine. That is a felony punishable by up to 10 years in prison and or $15,000 in fines plus court costs. Do you understand the charge and the possible penalty? Um, yes, I do. You have the right to have an attorney in this matter. If you'd like to have an attorney, but you don't believe that you can afford one, you may qualify for assistance through the local or through the public defender's office. You have the right to have a trial that could be by jury. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say orally or in writing will be used against you in court. You have the right to have an attorney present with you during any questioning by law enforcement. You understand these rights so far? Um. Yes, I'm just wondering why um knowingly amphetamine that was on me and I'm already on bond for not being able to be around um my own family because of an altercation that happened months ago um yeah, yeah so, so there's just a lot kind of jumbled around so I'll just you know, uh, be present for what it is I have to be present for. And uh, this case is quite clear. It is they're accusing you of having methamphetamine on your person. That's all we're talking about at this moment. Understand? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Would you like a public defender to assist you? Um, yes, please. Okay. Mr. Valley, you successfully completed an intake? Uh, yes, I have. Okay. Okay, Ms. Borisov, since it's a felony charge, you have the right to have a preliminary exam. That will be a hearing where the government will determine if there's probable cause to believe that the felony occurred and probable cause to believe that you are the person who committed the felony. Before we do a preliminary exam, you'll have a probable cause conference. That's a day where you, your lawyer, and the prosecutor determine if you have all the evidence you need to be ready for preliminary exam. The probable cause conference is scheduled for April 19 at 8.30 with Judge Flores. April 19, 8.30 with Judge Flores. The preliminary exam is April 26 at 8.30 also with Judge Flores. The probable cause conference may be done by video like we're doing right now, but the preliminary exam is absolutely in person. If you don't know how to do video conferencing and you're not in jail, of course, you need to come to court in person if you can't do the video conferencing. The inability to do video conferencing will not excuse your appearance at court. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, the address that you gave Judge Ward back on March 29 on Beale Street, is that the address I should use for you? Um, yes, that is my current address. That is where all of my belongings and things are, as well as, um, you know, the other individual um, that I live with, but he had went out of town and possibly took his key. So I just have to wait for him to get back into town and to contact me to get back over there. Um, but yes, that is my address. I just have to wait until I can confirm with him over the phone when I leave that he's home. The phone number that you've previously provided that's 4184, is that your phone number? Yes.
Of course, Mr. Rally, you know that uh, Ms. Borsop is currently on bond to me. Uh, anything additional that I need to know for bond consideration in this case? Um, no, Your Honor, nothing additional. Okay, for this case, I find that Ms. Borsoff has a risk of not returning to court as that has been somewhat of our struggle is her not being where she's supposed to be when she's supposed to be. So I do not find a personal recognizance bond will assure her appearance. Bond is set at $1,000, 10% under the condition. So I lost my, I've lost my job already over the last time I was arrested. That's why I am on bond. I'm not going to do anything to risk that. So I don't understand why it is that I have to not have a PR because I'm in the process of, of getting a job like it was that, that I was required Ms. to do. Ms. Borsoff, we're going to talk about that in a minute, but in the next case I, I'm going to talk to you about, you were ordered to appear at court last Monday, and we waited for you until Tuesday afternoon, and you never showed up to this moment to, yeah, as Judge Ward to to ordered to you to. I've been told to go to multiple offices that are not communicating with each other, and it's ruining me. Ms. Borsoff, we'll talk about that, but yelling at me isn't going to change my bond decision. It's not going to make it better. You are ordered to oh, appear no, at court. Yelling, I, I, need to, I need to get my point across because I, yep. I, most so, of the time it's just like, I don't have anything sure. to say, everything's okay. And then now all of a sudden they don't want me to say anything or don't want me to, to be able to communicate you know, with the judge or anybody else for that matter. So then all of a sudden now I don't get a PR. My last PR was 500. That was what, a week ago? Two yep, weeks and ago? You and you didn't appear for court. So you have a warrant in that file already. I didn't try court of it until April 22nd. You were ordered to appear in court no, Monday, court April, not until April 22nd. See, this Ms. is the new one here that I was just no. given today. That Ms. Borsa, of April. you keep yelling over me and not letting me speak. I have tried to give you your bond condition. This Please, is not going to make me change my mind. It's going to make it worse. Stop doing that. I want to be able to be out and not sitting in jail because nobody ever pays for me to sit in jail at all. It causes more problems. It causes more money. It, 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 it really does. I know I can stay on top of what it is that I need to stay on top of, which is my life and going in the correct direction. And that's all I've ever known. So at least give me that time to get everything set again, because this whole over last year, I have been continuously working ever since I have left rise i've been continuously working that is why i went to them because it feels comfortable there it's like family there's things to learn since i haven't been there it seems like things have completely taken a turn for the worst and have been out of control i want to be able to get back and work somewhere where it is required to have you know a healthy and and uh you know somewhat sober lifestyle in the eyes of the normal communicating and normal working person that is why I wish I could Ms. Borsoff, I'm going to give you your bond conditions and you're going to stop talking. Yes, you're going to appear at court April 19 and April 26. Do not leave the state of Michigan without permission. Do not commit any crimes while released. You must notify the court in writing if you change your address or telephone number. You are ordered to report to pretrial services the first business day after your release. You should receive a brochure there from the jail with a phone number and address on it. You are not to use alcohol, marijuana, or illegal controlled substances. You are ordered to participate in one-time one monthly random urine screens to prove your abstinence from substances that will be set up when you contact pretrial. Do not possess or purchase a firearm or a dangerous weapon while on bond. Mr. Raleigh, anything else on this file before I go to the other file? No, Your Honor. State of Michigan versus Janelle Borsa 2400299SM. Ms. Borsa, what we have here is a bench warrant that was issued for your arrest because you saw Judge Ward 
back on March 29, and you were ordered to report to probation by noon on April 1st. When you did not appear to report to probation, you, a warrant for your arrest was issued April 2nd. Now, this is after the original sentencing, wherein on February 26th, I told you you could have a PR bond, and as soon as you were released, you needed to come into probation within 48 hours. And you failed to report to probation after that PR bond. And so a warrant was issued for your arrest back on March 5th. So March 5th, a warrant went out because you didn't show up at probation. You saw Judge well, Ward. She gave been, you I've tell. already been here. I've already had a new you tether put on and everything, ma'am. Yep, and that's not reporting to probation to do your pre-sentence interview. That is something completely different. Well, I'm sorry that I've had a little bit of head damage over the years. And, and I'm trying to make things work myself, and I, maybe I just I, maybe I just need a little bit of help. Like I, sometimes I don't know what buildings to go to. I'm sorry. The probation agent did try to call the phone number that you just verified with me, and was unable to reach you to ask you to come in and remind you. She was trying to reach out to you and uh, tell you that you needed to report, um, but. Yeah, she couldn't get a hold of you. I didn't know a lot of people haven't been able to get a hold of me. I, mean, I have to go to another phone company and, and I'll, I'll see if somebody can, uh, you know, uh, help me with that to get a new phone and start a new plan. Because there's, my phone's just been in the hands of a lot of different individuals. And I know there's different stores you can get different phones at. And I just need to stick with the original. So... I mean, I'll do, I'll do whatever I can. I just need a little bit of help on the outside to do that, which is perfectly fine. Um, it's just, I always think I can do everything on my own. And sometimes I put too much on myself and I'm sorry that I can't remember where to go based on all these orders and stuff that are kind of coming my way. I just... But sitting in jail is not gonna help me at all. It's not gonna help me at all. Be out with normal people in society and not and not confined to an area where I still can't get anything done. I, at least I got a better chance out outside to get something done with my life rather than just sit sit and sleep it away. I'm sick of that. And I'm sorry, I just it's been really Mr. rough, and I'm sorry I missed up the 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 Mr. What Rally, anything, anything else for you? Um, uh, bond for Miss uh, Borsa, or um, yeah, I'm bond for Miss Borsa. No, Your Honor. Like So I have to come back to the Years. So yeah, I do need a protector on the outside. For sure. Someone that you guys approve for me to stay with and that can they have the authority and the means to take the me where I need to go when I need to be there. And someone that I know, somebody isn't going to just show up at where I'm staying and take advantage of that person because they think they have a, a disability or a mental disability. And it's it's not it's it's not appropriate at all to to put someone that you know mentally might not be right by themselves in confinement. Cause it's like, it's like self-sabotage, man. My, uh, is everything okay for me to go? I'm finishing up your bond paperwork and you haven't stopped talking. I'm sorry. I'm 
All right. On the misdemeanor file, as you've had several uh, opportunities to appear at probation, and there seems to be some issue, uh, probation's here in the courthouse. You have not turned up here at the courthouse to address this. Bond is set at $2,000, 10% with the conditions. Most of the conditions are the same ones as before, which are don't leave the state, do not commit crimes, notify the court in writing of your change of address or telephone number, do not use alcohol, marijuana, illegal controlled substances, do not possess or purchase a firearm or dangerous weapon. Do not engage in harassing, intimidating, stalking, or threatening behavior. Do not assault, harass, intimidate, beat, molest, wound, or threaten Gina Bursa. Do not have any direct or indirect contact with Gina Bursa. You're not to be within 2,000 feet of where she lives, works, or goes to school. And of course, a GPS tether with a zone around Ms. Borseth's residence. Further, I did order that you're not to be PR'd until your pre-sentence interview has been completed because that is what we've been trying to do at probation to get ready for sentencing, which is currently scheduled for May 6th. And um, we've been unable to complete that. Mr. Raleigh, no. anything else on this case? No, Your Honor, I did have a question though. Uh, okay. What was the bond on the felony case? 1,010%. Thank you. All right. I think that's it for Ms. Borsoff. You're excused now, Ms. Borsoff. Thank you. Oops.